first we want to get to Chuck because we have been on a temperature roller coaster this week from cool to warm to where we're headed today. So back again. Basically. So on these um, uh, roller coasters like uh, at Indiana Beach, the the, hur the Hoosier Hurricane, I don't okay. know if you all remember that, you'd get to the top, you're like this, and then you scream as you go down. Don't scream, but we're on our way up to the top today. And then by Sunday morning, we Ooh, are up. way down like 40 degrees cooler uh, by Sunday morning. So here we go. We're, we'll start your roller coaster ride with a lovely shot of downtown Indianapolis. And you know, we've been holding pretty steady when we went on the air at 4 a.m. We were at 70. We are now at 601, now at 68. Zionsville's at a cooler 61. You Quakers in Plainfield at 66 and in Greenfield at 64 degrees. Uh, Kokomo is at 62 at IU Kokomo. And at the IU uh, campus in Bloomington, it is 64. So we're all pretty much in the same boat. It's certainly warmer than yesterday. Uh, Muncie now 19 degrees warmer than at this time yesterday. So if you woke up in a bit of a sweat, maybe that's why it wasn't nearly as cold as the night before. Now what we don't have this morning is rain and certainly we're in a position where we could use some. Honestly, I see that chance coming in Friday. That line of rain right now extends from the southern part of Minnesota through downtown Minneapolis up towards Duluth. That's a part of a front. Not going to be here today. We'll be here tomorrow, but I don't even see us getting as much as a quarter of an inch out of that. Well, sunrise coming up in a little over an hour at 717 this morning. At that time, we'll still be in the 60s when the kids have recess today, 77 with a high of 88 later today. You better enjoy it, folks, because we've got a big drop for the weekend, and I'm not kidding. All right, let's get to traffic this morning. Um, as I show you this, what you're looking at here is the south split. We just heard uh, from INDOT that on I-74 and 465, so that's really out here off the map, uh, there is a pedestrian walking on I-74 near 465. So police are on that, uh, but there are no serious problems here, but we wanted to let you know about that. In the meantime, here's the south split, and we do have a slowdown now. This is coming off the exit ramp, 65, if you're headed out to... Uh, 70 out at the airport. We've got a disabled vehicle there, so it's down to one lane briefly. And we say good morning to those of you in Franklin this morning. This is Interstate 65 at State Road 44. Moving well. Your forecast is coming up in a few minutes. I heard screaming and everything at first. I thought it was like someone just like playing around in the hallways. This morning, we want to get you caught up on the very tragic and deadly shooting at a high school in Georgia. Right now, we know at least four people are dead, including two students and two teachers. Nine others were also injured in this shooting, but are expected to be okay. Police are still looking into the motive. The suspect, a 14 year old named Colt Gray, is awaiting several charges. He's accused of walking into Appalachia High School yesterday morning with a long rifle shooting and killing several people. Police say murder charges are being filed and prosecutors will try him as an adult. Just after that shooting, police say parents started rushing toward the school, some of them on foot in fear. I've walked two, almost two and a half miles to get to the school. This is the, a parent's worst nightmare, is to hear about a shooting at their child's school. We'll have more on this story coming up at 645, as police now say the suspect was interviewed by police a year ago about a school shooting. We'll tell you why he was allowed to go back to school as we follow up on this story later this morning. And here at home this morning, an IMPD officer is off the job after being arrested and charged with child sex crimes. This officer's name is Kamal Bola and he is in the Hendricks County Jail after IMPD says a victim's family went to detectives earlier this week. See New Yorker is live this morning with some of the troubling details behind this investigation. Good morning, Sia. Good morning, Julia and Jalea. Kamal Bola is facing three preliminary counts of child molestation and public voyeurism. That's four felony counts. Now take a look. IMPD says the victim's family reported the allegations on Tuesday. Investigators interviewed Officer Bola and then arrested him later that night. IMPD tells 13 News he's been suspended and stripped of all his policing power. A statement from Chief Chris Bailey called the allegations against the officer, quote, disturbing and entirely unacceptable. 
unacceptable. A criminologist who studies police committing crime says incidents like this are problematic. Well, obviously, I'm not suggesting uh, uh, that most police officers are sexual predators. Obviously, that's not the case. Uh, but it is a problem. It's a problem that's recognized uh, by law enforcement leaders across the country. Bola is in the Hendricks County Jail without bond. Ladies. And see, maybe even most troubling is that th he is not the first one in a, in a power of this to be charged with this similar crime. Julia, you're absolutely right. Sadly, this is the fourth IMPD officer just this year to be charged with child sex crimes. So it's unfortunately a very, very disturbing trend. And unsettling, Sia, thank you. We'll check back in with you soon. Well, right now we are following breaking news into the newsroom from the far east side of Indianapolis. We know Metro Police are investigating after a woman was found shot during all we know is maybe some sort of domestic incident. So this happened around 345 early this morning at a home on Calvert Court. That's near 30th and Post Road. That's where those officers say they found a woman shot. She was rushed to the hospital and she was critical at first, but police say that she is expected to be OK. IMPD tells us they are still working to find out what else might have led up to this shooting. But again, they do believe this is domestic in nature. Unfortunately, they do say kids were present when this happened as well, but they do have a suspect in custody right now. Well, this morning we are reaching out to police to find out more about a deadly shooting that happened on Indy's east side. Police arrived at South Gray Street yesterday afternoon near East Washington and South Rural Streets. There they found a victim dead at the scene. Right now, no word from police on a motive or who that person is. We will pass along any new information as it becomes available. And now to yet another turn in the Delphi murders investigation. The judges ruled that the jury will not be allowed to hear what the defense is calling key evidence. And so this is a major setback to defendant Richard Allen, who is accused of killing two Delphi teenagers. Let's get to Gina Glaros joining us now with the big questions. What does this mean for that trial coming up now next month? Good morning to you ladies. Yes, we'll get to that in one minute, but I want to start from the beginning. Shortly after Richard Allen was arrested years ago in 2017 and charged with the murders of Abby Williams and Libby German, his public defender said it was part of a ritualistic sacrifice committed by followers of a pagan religion called Odinism. Even state police investigated that possibility. An expert on ritualistic crime scene investigations recently testified photos from the Delphi crime scene show classic signs of an Odinistic sacrifice. Well, now Judge Francis Gull ruled none of that evidence or information about alternate suspects can be heard by the jury. She said the defense team failed to show a clear link between Odinism, the alternate suspects and the murders. The judge's ruling comes as a surprise to attorneys and judges we contacted, including 13 News legal analyst Katie Jackson Lindsay. You absolutely, if you have evidence or you have information that someone else is the bad actor, that someone else committed this crime, you have to be able to present that. So it, it, this ruling absolutely undercuts the opportunity to do that. And it's just not something that you see happen often. Richard Allen is charged with the 2017 murders of Abby Williams and Libby German. As for that trial that is set to begin next month, this latest ruling by Judge Gall against Allen and his defense team raises a lot of questions about whether the state court of appeals might reverse the judge's decisions and order a new trial if Allen is convicted and decides to appeal. Just another yeah. obstacle. And your heart hurts for the families that are caught right. in the middle of this, if this, just, if this continues to be delayed. Gina, thank you. Well, new this morning, we're learning Governor Holcomb is traveling to Ukraine. Holcomb will, in fact, meet with Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky to talk about future economic and cultural relationships. The governor will also visit the Wall of Remembrance for Ukraine to honor those who have lost their lives in this war with Russia. It's Governor Holcomb's first trip to Ukraine. It's also the first time a U.S. governor has traveled to the country since the beginning of Russia's full 
full-scale invasion.